Hello and welcome to the presentation of our paper, Privately Connecting Mobility to Infectious Diseases via Applied Cryptography. This paper is a joint work with Alexandros Bambolidis, Alessandro Bruni, Lukas Helminger, Daniel Kales, Christian Rechberger and me, Roman Walch. When we have a look at the recent COVID-19 pandemic, we can see that a lot of technical solutions have been proposed to help the population with contact tracing. So people could decide to install an app, activate Bluetooth, and when they have been in contact with another app user who has later been uh, tested positive with the uh, virus, and they get the notification from the app that they might be positive as well. However, the success of this app crucially relies on a large chunk of the population actually installing and using this app. So when we wanted uh, to help the, the spread, uh, the, uh, containing the spread of the disease, we thought of a different solution, which does not rely on an app. So what we wanted to do is, we wanted to create a, a heat map which aggregates the location data of infected individuals. And this heat map is uh, intended to keep track of the spread of the disease and help policy makers in uh, making some uh, measures uh, which help containing the disease. And uh, for example, they can take some targeted measures for closing off public places in, in, which are located in, inside of some hotspots. And crucially, our approach does not rely on the population installing some apps. They just need to run around with their mobile phones. So when we want to create this heat map of the aggregated location data of infected individuals, we want to use two data sets. So on one hand, we want to use the location data, which is collected from mobile network operators. And on the other hand, we want to use um, health records from health authorities, which know which individuals in the population are actually infected. However, we cannot tri trivially combine these uh, two data sets to create our heat map because we are dealing with very privacy sensitive data sets. On one hand, we have our location data, and on the other hand, we have health records, so very sensitive data sets. So our goal was to construct a, a protocol which on one hand produces this heat map that we want to uh, create, and on the other hand, protects both of these data sets. So we do not want uh, to give anyone the ability to learn who is actually infected with the disease, and on the other hand, we do not want anyone to give a tool to track the location of any individual. So now let's have a look at um, how we achieve this uh, privacy preserving heat map protocol. So when we uh, have a look at uh, the, the actual process in creating this heat map, we can uh, see that it actually boils down to a matrix vector multiplication. So here on the left side, we have the input of the health authority, which is basically a vector which indicates which people are actually infected. So a zero here indicates that the person corresponding to ID2 is not infected, and the one here indicates that the person to corresponding to ID1 is infected with the virus. The matrix, on the other hand, is the input of the mobile network operator. And the elements in the matrix indicate how long each person has, uh, has been connected to a given cell tower. And when we then perform this matrix vector multiplication, the result is our desired heat map, which indicates uh, how long the aggregated uh, uh, how long all individuals which are infected have aggregately spent on a given cell tower. And we now have a look at how we can uh, realize this uh, matrix vector multiplication without leaking these data sets. So our first privacy enhancing technology that we use is homomorphic encryption. So basically when the health authority sends its uh, identifiers on who is infected and not to the mobile network operator, it uses a homomorphic encryption scheme to uh, encrypt this uh, input vector of the protocol. So it's, uh, the input is actually encrypted, so the mobile network operator is not able to learn who is infected. But since it is a homomorphic encryption scheme, it is still able to combine um, this encrypted vector with its location data matrix and produce an encrypted version of the desired heat map. And once it's done, it sends back this heat map to the health authority, who can then is the only one who has access to the secret decryption key and is the only one who can actually get the final heat map of the protocol. So homomorphic encryption on one hand protects the patient identifiers, and on the other hand, since the, the location data is combined with the ciphertext, um, with this homomorphic ciphertext, um, the location data is not uh, leaked by the homomorphic encryption scheme itself. However, this protocol has another problem, and that is that once the client has decrypt, uh, decrypted the heat map, uh, the heat map still can leak location data. For example, consider when the, the query consists of only one patient or we have uh, two patients from uh, completely different regions in a country, then these location profiles of these patients are clearly visible on the uh, final heat map. 
So in the paper, we propose to protect um, against this uh, inherent leakage of this heat map by using differential privacy. And this basically works by adding some correctly parameterized noise to the output of the protocol. And this achieves that the heat map is statistically independent to the contribution to an individual. So how does this look in practice? So here on the left side, we have created a heat map for London where we only included one person and you can clearly see the location profile of this person on the heat map. On the right side, we then apply differential privacy and you can clearly also see that the location data is drowned in noise. So um, the, the location profile of this individual is not visible on the heat map anymore. But clearly this also does not give any utility of the heat map. Then the image changes when we include a lot of more patients into the heat map protocol. So here on the left side, we have created a heat map for 600 infected people. And um, on the right side, we also apply differential privacy to this heat map. And what you can clearly see here, that even though individual's location is uh, drowned in the noise, when we have a hotspot here on the left side, this hotspot is also clearly visible on the right side. So the utility of the heat map is still pre preserved, even though we are using differential privacy. So, so far, um, what we have achieved is that the patient's identifiers is, are protected by homomorphic encryption, and the location data of the mobile network operator is protected by differential privacy. However, the protocol so far uh, assumes that all parties behave honestly. And the protocol does not protect against, for example, malicious queries from the health authorities. So if they want to track an individual, what they can do is that they, when they uh, um, craft an input vector, which in our protocol is assumed to be 0 or 1, they can create, um, set this value of this uh, targeted individual to a much larger value. And what this achieves is that it basically, in the output heat map, it, um, um, it increases the contribution of this uh, single individual. The location data of this individu individual is then clearly visible on this heat map. And since this is basically a, a hotspot on its own, differential privacy does not protect against this kind of attack. And also, since we're using homomorphic encryption, the mobile network operator cannot uh, trivially check whether this input vector consists of just zeros and ones. So we had to come up with a different method to protect against this kind of attacks. And what we do is we have derived some uh, invalidation techniques from zero knowledge proofs and they have the, the, the goal to invalidate the heat map if we detect malicious behavior. So how does this work? So basically our goal is that we add some value to the heat map, uh, so a mask to this heat map, and if the client query is honest, so if it just uh, contains zeros and ones, then this mask will be zero and does not affect the heat map. But if it detects malicious behavior, then the mask should be random values and invalidate the heat map. And our mask, our technique, um, relies on one simple observation. And that basically is that when we um, subtract um, the, uh, each element of the vector by one and multiply it to the original vector, then this results in the uh, zero vector if and only if the initial vector contains only zeros and ones. And in the paper, we show how we can uh, transform this uh, simple observation into this uh, mask here, which provides a high statistical security. So with this, te te with this technique, we can invalidate uh, the result for malicious queries so that the health authority cannot track the location data of any individuals. So, so far we have constructed this protocol and it protects both of these uh, um, highly sensitive data sets which are involved. So we then, of course, also implemented this protocol and we used C++ as programming language and we're using the Microsoft C library for homomorphic encryption. And we benchmarked this uh, protocol for, for, um, for creating a heat map of 8 million subscribers, which is for, uh, enough, for example, for creating a heat map of the whole country of Austria or larger cities such as Singapore and New York City. And our uh, benchmark showed that uh, creating one of these heat maps uh, just takes 70 minutes which is a very feasible runtime in practice. And when we would outsource this uh, computation to Amazon Cloud, this would correspond to just paying $5. So this shows that it's very feasible to create these heat maps maybe once a week in practice. So, but when we want to deploy this in practice, we need to discuss some, uh, some properties of the protocol. So on one hand, when we, what we have seen in the beginning is that the, the health authority and the mobile network operator needs to agree on some indices, so to say that um, ID1 corresponds to this person and so on. So uh, if we wouldn't do that, then the mobile network operator wouldn't be able to construct the correct matrix for that. 
and in a paper we discussed that we can use existing private set intersection solutions to, for this agreeing on indices parts and this uh, is, um, adds comparably low runtime and communication overhead to the rest of the protocol. Another thing to consider when we want to deploy this in practice is that people might not want to be part of this com uh, computation. So when we have a look at the contact tracing approach, um, people who don't want to be part of the um, protocol, they simply do not install the app. So installing the app is basically an opt-in approach to be part of the protocol. For our heatmap protocol, uh, when we also give, want to give the, the, the uh, people the possibility to not be part of the protocol, we can also construct an opt-in uh, solution by, let's say, the, um, letting them decide to be part of the protocol when they ge get a positive test result. For example, if they get it from the doctors, they can say, yes, I want to be part of the protocol. And also when they get an email, they can reply, yes, I want to be part of this protocol as well. And we conjecture that uh, our protocol is still useful, even though when uh, only a small part of the population agrees to be part of the protocol, so that the protocol will produce a, a nice uh, and useful heat map which helps to track the spread of the disease. So to conclude this presentation, so we have uh, created a protocol which allows to produce a heat map of the aggregated location data of only infected individuals, and this helps in uh, um, uh, tracking the spread of the disease and helps uh, government officials with uh, uh, taking targeted measures. And we realize these protocols by combining homomorphic encryption, differential privacy, and invalidation techniques that we derive from zero knowledge proofs. So in our paper, we have much more details about this protocol and this is publicly available on ePrint. And also um, our implementation is publicly available. It's an open source implementation you can get here on GitHub with this link. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions regarding our protocol, please do not hesitate to ask during the conference. So thanks again.